Greetings from Tokyo, my dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I hope you're doing very well today. I'd like to talk to you today about a film from 1974. This is directed by Kazuo Hara, the Japanese filmmaker Kazuo Hara. And the film is Extreme Private Eros Love Song, 1974. So before I move on, I should mention that if you haven't seen this film, the it, it, I'm going to be talking about certain aspects of this film in this video. So uh, if you don't want to be spoiled, I suggest you stop this video right now. But I should also mention that this film is one that is very intense. It is a documentary film. And it is a film that focuses on this particular person whose name is Miyuki Takeda or Takeda Miyuki. But it is a work that is very intimate. And I think from the viewpoint of some people, perhaps, maybe shockingly intimate, too shocking in terms of its intimacy, perhaps. And so I don't recommend this to everyone. This is a, a work that is of a certain intensity level that I think some people might not appreciate or might not like. And I can totally get that. I totally understand uh, what people might feel. And so what I urge you to do is if you have not seen the film yet, please stop this video and uh, at the risk of spoiling it myself, because I don't want to spoil it for you, uh, maybe just do a little bit of research online and just get a little bit of background or synopsis about the film. And um, if you are still, uh, if you are okay with that, then I would suggest that you try to find the work. Um, it is available, for instance, on this Facets Video DVD from the United States. And it's quite, uh, it, as I said, if you are okay with this kind of subject matter, um, then I would suggest that you, uh, and, and if you're interested in the works of Kazuo Hara and uh, this very interesting Japanese filmmaker, then of course this is a film that is, I think, worth checking out. But again, uh, please be warned because there are uh, a certain number of scenes that I think are very intense and uh, they have uh, a, a raw power to them that um, might offend some people. Uh, let me just be frank, it, it could offend some people. And so uh, please uh, just be wary of that. And uh, again, this is not a film that you have to watch. But uh, I've I think it's one that I really want to discuss. And so uh, if you are okay with that, then please uh, try to find it and watch it. And then you can come back to this video and I'd be very happy to discuss this film and to hear your thoughts about this very, very unforgettable work, uh, Extreme Private Eros, Love Song, 1974. Okay, so you're back. So that means I'm assuming that you've seen the work and if you have, then I think undoubtedly you'll understand what I'm trying to say when I say that this film is incredibly intimate. This is an incredibly intimate portrait of this woman, uh, this very interesting person who is outspoken and she is very... Uh, uh, she is very uh, uh, strong and she is also very human, I think. She is, I think, not afraid to show the wide range of her feeling. She is very articulate. She is quite, uh, quite intelligent, very intelligent. This is Takeda Miyuki. 
But of course, what makes this work incredibly uh, thought-provoking and powerful and uh, so intimate, it, it's, I feel almost bad watching parts of it because it feels like I'm, I'm looking into a, a private world. Right? Because she is the former lover, the ex-lover at the time, of the filmmaker Hara. And this is very significant, right? Because they have still a kind of relationship, an emotional relationship that is obviously on display at the time of the making of this film. And it, I think it comes out in a number of ways that I find very startling. The first way, of course, is we see Miyuki, Takeda Miyuki, engaging uh, with or in situations with or being interviewed together with um, maybe boyfriends at the time or girlfriends at the time, lovers at the time who are not Hara. So this is after Hara has broken up with uh, uh, Takeda Miyuki, but now Hara is filming exchanges or conversations or interviews with the now lovers of Takeda Miyuki. And so I can just, I can't even begin to imagine uh, the kind of, of, uh, of feelings that Hara must have been going through as he was making this film. I mean, it takes a certain amount of, I think, courage on the part, not just of uh, Takeda Miyuki, but also of Hara, the filmmaker, because as much as this, as this is a f portrait of Miyuki, or Takeda Miyuki, I think this is also in many ways a, a portrait or a self-portrait, if you will, of Hara, the filmmaker, Hara, the man, and uh, at this point in his life, at least. And so this is, uh, uh, in this respect, uh, such a, a fascinating and uh, very, I would say, very personal look into this particular point in time of Hara and Takeda Miyuki. And as I said before, I think it feels almost so personal that I feel guilty sometimes watching this work. Um, okay, but that's one aspect that I think it makes this a, a powerful personal portrait. The other aspects, of course, are the, the uh, just the the direct approach to certain aspects of of um, uh, of being human, right? And this is, comes across in two, uh, or may say three uh, areas that I think are three examples that I think are, are worth mentioning. The first example is, uh, well, it's this idea of of uh, you know, former lovers and new lovers, and how that can create uh, a sense of jealousy, and uh, how that can engender certain emotions in the the other person. Because right at this time, Hara had already broken up with Takeda Miyuki, but now Hara was uh, in both a professional and now personal relationship with uh, uh, Kobayashi Sachiko, and this comes across, of course, in a very famous exchange that's captured in this film of uh, Hara actually filming Takeda Miyuki and uh, Kobayashi Sachiko together. And I think Kobayashi is trying to interview her, uh, Miyuki that is, or Takeda Miyuki that is, but you can tell that Takeda Miyuki is already becoming quite jealous, right? So it's this idea of Takeda Miyuki and Hara had already broken up. But now Hara was with a new person. That's Kobayashi Sachiko. And so we see, the f in the film, we see a certain sense of jealousy that's being engendered in uh, Takeda Miyuki as she is observing this new relationship that her former lover, the filmmaker Hara, is now in. So this is, again, another aspect of something that I think is very personal, very raw, uh, something that is also uh, a direct link and something that uh, I think anyone who watches this film can understand uh, this idea of 
of a, a, of a true emotional response uh, that is this feeling of jealousy. I mean, I think we've all felt the, the, the feelings of jealousy at some point in our lives, so I think we can always relate to this. And um, uh, this is a, a kind of a romantic jealousy or a sexual jealousy, perhaps. And I think to capture this in such a way where you have Hara filming his current lover and his former lover and he is the one filming creates this dynamic that is just courageously intimate let me put it that way courageously intimate on the part of everyone concerned and it's just uh, leaving open uh, this part of their lives uh, and it's it's memorialized forever on film so I find that aspect to be quite courageous and uh, very brave on the part of the, the 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 parties involved that bravery and courage doesn't end there of course because we see other moments of of uh, real personal power and intimacy I mean we see uh, Kobayashi Sachiko uh, going through uh, childbirth. We also see Takeda Miyuki also going through childbirth. And they're, the childbirth scenes are both depicted in the film, although they are uh, of, a, of a different nature, each of them. And the, I think the, the showing of, of the, the childbirth uh, that uh, Takeda Miyuki uh, undergoes is again one of those just uh, extremely personal moments. It is so personal. It it it's it's a it's a kind of reminder of just I guess it, it's a reminder of the fact that this film is in, obviously right when it comes down to it it is a film that is about human beings it's a film that is about human beings thinking breathing uh, uh, feeling human beings and they go through uh, aspects of life that are uh, things that are on the one hand so commonplace or they should be on the other hand they are almost taboo and it's, it, these are things that are just so shocking when they are filmed like this and I think childbirth is one of those aspects of human life, right? It's childbirth is is something that is I mean I don't want to say commonplace, but it's something that is a fundamental part of our lives, right? Our existence. And so on the one hand it, it shouldn't seem to be shocking, right? But when it's filmed in this way, it is very uh it is very shocking in the fact that it's something that um, you know I am not used to seeing uh, being filmed like this, and so, and let alone the fact that this is the uh, again Takeda Miyuki and uh, Hara and the relationship that they have and they had uh, makes this uh, scene, I think, very very powerful and. Uh, all the more powerful uh, by the fact that it is again something that is just showing us something that is a fundamental part of human existence and so that creates a, a very interesting um, almost paradoxical uh, aspect to this film because it is at once showing us something that is uh, everyday or fundamentally uh, a fundamental aspect of human life and human existence on the one hand so something that is fundamental on the other hand it is something that is almost taboo vis-a-vis -vis the context of cinema and so if you have something that's so fundamentally important on the one hand and yet something that is perhaps taboo in terms of filming on the other hand and it's the same thing it creates this 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 very strange exhilarating sense uh, within me as the viewer and it's so exhilarating that I f again I feel guilty watching it because it feels like I am watching something 
that I shouldn't be watching because it, it feels like something that should be a private moment between um, uh, Takeda Miyuki and uh, those uh, within her intimate circle. But of course she is being filmed uh, right, uh, with her consent and uh, Hara is filming her uh, with her consent and he is doing so and yes and that's it. So the film is laying bare uh, something that is so intimately human and it's so intimately human that it's rarely shot on film, at least films that I'm used to seeing. And so therefore this film gains a certain level of, of importance and a certain level of, of, uh, of real insight, I think, uh, in terms of human existence. And it does so in a way that is very brave, very courageous, and it leaves open the possibility of harm and risk and criticism. And so uh, I find this particular moment to be uh, a, it, it's a, for my point of view, it's a very complicated moment as far as I'm concerned for the reasons that I've tried to express uh, just moments ago. Uh, but I really have to uh, commend Hara uh, for the risks that he's taking here and the bravery that he is showing. And of course, uh, Takeda Miyuki as well. Of course, of course, the, uh, just the, 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 the strength that she has here is uh, something, uh, to, to the strength of showing us uh, or allowing us to experience or, or sharing with us something that is such an important moment and such an intimate moment in her life, I think is uh, is really, I, I don't even know what to, to think. It's, it's uh, a truly affecting moment uh, as far as I'm concerned vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, you know, my relationship with the film. You know, I am a viewer of this film. So, yes, so there is that aspect of the film as well. And there are other very intimate moments as well. Uh, there is one moment, I think, where the camera is actually showing her face, uh, Takeda Miyuki's face, as uh, she is in the middle of lovemaking. And it's not, the, the camera is not uh, zooming out and showing any kind of, of uh, what I would consider anything that is gratuitous in nature, but it's, it's really cl closing in on her face and showing us her face as she is in the middle of this, this act and what she must be feeling and thinking at this particular moment. You know, that what, what does the human face register in this particular moment? And I think the, the assumption is, is that the, the person that is making love to her at this particular moment is Hara, the filmmaker himself. And so this adds yet another, uh, another level of raw intimacy that, again, I am watching and I am watching uh, by virtue of the fact that I am a viewer of this documentary. And yet I cannot help but feel, uh, at least to a certain degree, somewhat guilty uh, because I am watching this thing unfold before me that seems to me, based on my own uh, views and feelings and uh, my own uh, uh, what is it, social mores, social mores, I'm viewing something that I feel like is something that should be private between uh, the individuals and something that I shouldn't be watching. But at the same time, this is something that I am watching because it is something that is almost uh, a taboo thing. And that, that is something that on a broader level uh, brings me to Hara the filmmaker because his camera here is I think giving us a glimpse into something that is on the one hand forbidden or taboo forbidden or taboo uh, but on the other hand so fundamental to human existence and so you have this wonderful dichotomy at play here 
how can something that is so fundamental to human existence be taboo in the context of cinema? And when the more I think about that, the more my my head becomes uh, uh, it becomes it, I think it exposes itself to the potential hypocrisy that perhaps I am dependent I have been so dependent on uh, as uh, you know, a man growing up in this modern society or as a particular uh, uh, viewer of certain types of films Hara with his camera with his lens is showing me something that is truly remarkable about his cinema and you know, he's showing me something that is so shocking but it's so shocking by virtue of the fact that it's so true and honest to human nature I don't know if that makes sense and so therefore when I realize the link between these two seemingly disparate elements and I realize the fact that what he is showing us is are aspects of human nature that are so fundamental and important and just some so universal then I go back and I think, well, then why am I shocked? Why am I shocked by this? And that in turn creates this inner dialogue in my head and it creates this circle wherein I'm trying to reconcile these two seemingly opposite factors in my head. And I think my attempts to do so break down immediately. And that breakdown, I think, is so important to me because it helps me hopefully anyway, to see the light as it were, or grow, or to to learn something about myself, uh, to learn about some fundamental flaw in myself, or to learn about a, a something that I must try to overcome in terms of my own insecurity, or in terms of my own uh, uh, discomfort. And again, why do I feel uncomfortable when it's uh, something that is... Uh, uh, when I'm watching something that is, uh, on the one hand, so fundamentally important to uh, these uh, aspects of human existence that we all share. But at the same time, I do feel this way because I am dealing with a film that is, right, in many respects, a film that is an intimate portrayal between these people, these two or three people. And so... I can't help it. I can't help but feel guilt, or I can't help but feel uh, a little bit, maybe shame is a little bit too strong, but but I can't help it. And so this inner dialogue within my head uh, that is engendered when I watch a horror film, or in particular this particular film, is something that I think is very important for my own film-watching journey. And so this film, Extreme Private Eros Love Song 1974, creates this, uh, these complications in me that are, uh, sometimes I feel uncomfortable trying to deal with. But again, that is just a, an indication of my own, uh, my own sort of uh, flaw or my own sort of uh, uh, shortcomings as a viewer and I think ultimately as a human being. But uh, regardless of how I conclude or what conclusions I reach in terms of my own personal inner dialogues that are engendered by watching this film, uh, whatever conclusions I reach, I think in the end, this film is just a a remarkable example of the power of cinema and the way in which it can show us the deep-rooted, uh, private, personal, intimate aspects of human nature. And it does so in a way that is, I think, very uh, disruptive and very shocking, right? Because uh, the way it's filmed, because the, the image is oftentimes out of sync with the, the the words that we hear so we see people speak but the it doesn't match up with the sounds that we hear and I think that adds it an extra layer does it not of of um, of disruptiveness and it it it, it focus it it has a strange way of 
having me focus more on the image and at the same time having me uh, tune my ears more acutely to the words that I'm listening to at the same time. And that powerful dynamic is, I think, just uh, a, another example of the, the, um, the kind of, of, of um, sort of the polar opposite uh, nature of this film. Uh, in other words, you know, it's it's like sound and image are clashing, just as the concepts of of uh, the portrayal of uh, fundamentally important aspects of, of human existence that are at the same time taboo. I mean, these things are also clashing. But are they really clashing, or are they truly things that are complementary to each other, and that they form something that is, in essence, a true expression of aspects of life that are undeniably uh, fundamental. And again, this is part of the dialogue that goes in my head every time I watch this film. And even to this day, I haven't reached any solid conclusions about it. And I don't know if I ever will, but uh, I don't think the point of watching this film for me is to reach a conclusion necessarily, but the point is to create uh, dialogue and to question and to challenge. And oh boy, this film does that to me in so many ways. And so that is Extreme Private Eros Love Song 1974. So if you've seen the film and if you have any thoughts or comments about the film, please feel free to leave them down below. I would love to hear what you have to say. Uh, my comments have only, I think, scratched the surface of this, frankly, uh, in many respects, difficult film for me, but it's a film that I think is so worth discussing. So if you have any thoughts or comments about the film, please let me know in the comment section below. But in the meantime, my friends, uh, I hope you are doing well, and I hope to talk about the next film that was made by Kazuo Hara very soon and the film is the emperor's naked army marches on so hopefully i will address that very soon and it is a very important work so until then my friends i hope you are happy and healthy and well and that you keep on watching a lot of great great movies so until we see each other again cheers <laughs>